Hello all, welcome to Paritranaya. In this class, we will be discussing about an another important art and culture related topic that is the arts of the Indus Valley. So, a few of the topics which will be covered under this will be overlapping with history subject. So, a few of the things we will be also discussing in history as well. So, this the arts of Indus Valley. So, it is present in 11th standard introduction to Indian art book. So we know that this book is very important but when it comes to this topic often we get confused and often the students ask questions so which are the important topics that we have to focus because every line starts appearing important. So in order to ease your efforts so we have brought with uh, we have brought you with this class so wherein this information would be sufficient from both glimpses as well as mains point of view. So when we are preparing this topic we need to keep the exams demand in mind. So what does the exam expects us? The exam expects us to focus on aspects like the metals known by Indus Valley Civilization. Next, the animals known to Indus Valley Civilization. The textiles or the type of dress which the Indus Valley Civilization people used to wear. So these are the various aspects which we have to focus. And also the type of culture which was prevailing at that time. So from that perspective, we shall uh, what learn this topic. And also wherever, whenever we encounter any Indus Valley site. So the next question that we need to ask to ourselves is, where is that site present in modern day? If it is present in India, then we also need to know, know about the respective state and if it is present in some other country, then where it is present. So with this perspective, we shall move. Then itself we will be able to what, uh, complete the topic of Indus Valley Civilization and also we can uh, what gain confidence. Okay, We can go gain confidence about this topic. So first we shall begin with uh, metals known. So before that, these are the various Indus Valley sites. So with respect to these sites, we will be discussing later, later on. So where exactly they are present. So here the metals known to Indus Valley Civilization were gold, copper, bronze. Now in few of the other books, they may also have a reference to other materials, other metals as well. But we need to what, reduce our burden. So whatever the information which is present in this book or in this chapter, we should stick to it. So here they have mentioned about gold, copper and bronze. Because always it is said that one in hand is better than two in a bush. So first whatever the information we have, let us cover it. So after completing all the syllabus, once there is a sufficient time, then we can go for exploring the extra information. But initially this information would be more than sufficient. Sufficient. Now the next question, in the modern day, we use iron. We use iron. So whether Indus Valley people were aware of iron? No. So Indus Valley people were not aware of iron. So they were aware of gold, they were aware of copper, they were aware of bronze, but they were not aware of iron. So if you look at the previous year question papers, so they asked question. So in the question they have mentioned that Indus Valley Civilization people were aware of iron. So if they make such kind of statement, then that statement will be false. It means apart from the metals which have been mentioned here, if they mention about few other important metal, then definitely that metal Indus Valley Civilization people were unaware of it. Okay, unaware of it. And very frequently they ask questions related to iron itself. Okay, because iron is the most predominant metal that is used in modern day. Modern day. So next animals so now through various objects uh, art objects of uh, what indus valley we'll come to know that they were aware of dog they were aware of buffalo bull rhinoceros tiger elephant bison goat antelopes monkeys squirrels so a few of these animals if you are not seen then you can uh, try to look at its image through google okay. google but after looking into all these elements all these animals the next question is which are the important animals of modern day which Indus Valley Civilization was unaware of. So one thing that stands out is horse. And if you look at the previous year question papers, they have focused on horse, at least two or three times they have asked on horse. So whether they were aware of horse, they were not aware of horse. Indus Valley Civilization people, they were unaware of the existence of an animal called as horse. Now if you do a random check in internet, if you try to search in Google, then somewhere it will produce a result that somewhere they have got a proof related to horse and all. But UPSC will never ask such kind of questions because when they are asking questions, they will frame questions from st some standard books like either NCRT or some other standard books. So through all these NCRTs and standard books, we will come to know that Indus Valley Civilization was not aware of horse. So we shall stick to it. We shall not stick to what we shall uh, not uh, give a reference to some random information which is present in the internet. We shall stick to the what concrete evidence which is present in the standard books. So through these standard books, we come to a conclusion that horse Indus Valley Civilization people were unaware of horse. They were unaware of, they did not know about iron. <coughs> they were unaware of horse. Horse. Whereas they were aware of all these animals. 
Next, stone sculptures. <clears throat> so, if you look at the industrial civilization, we come across various sculptures. So, whether they were aware of this sculpting technique, yes, they were aware. So, here we have a torso made up of red sandstone, which is uh, which we have found in Indus Valley site. So, this indicates that they were uh, aware of sculptures and all. Okay, they were involved in that activity. Next, also at some other site, we have got bust of a bearded man. So, this also example indicates that they were uh, aware of sculptures. Okay, next. Here another important point that we need to focus is the torso, previous image which we saw, it is made up of red sandstone and this bust of a bearded man is made up of what? A steatite soapstone. Okay, even such kind of questions will be asked. Next, metal castings. So castings made up of metal, okay, made up of metal. So here when we are giving some shape to, uh, or when we are making some kind of casting or sh uh, some shape we are creating, then we require certain techniques. So here we understand that Indus Valley Civilization, so in order to create such things, obviously we require a technique. If it is a metal casting, then we require a technique or next. So in order to create this casting, in order to create this casting, we require a technique. And here we come across one such technique is lost wax technique. So it means Indus Valley people, they were aware of a technique, casting technique called as lost wax technique, very important. So, in films, they may frame a question like Indus Valley Civilization people were unaware of uh, lost wax technique. So, if they frame such kind of questions, then that will be wrong. So, they were aware of lost wax technique. So, an example is Dancing Girl, which is present in Mohenjo Daro. Next, another example is the Bronze Bull, which is present at Mohenjo Daro. So, Mohenjo Daro. So, Dancing Girl and Bronze Bull, so the castings of Indus Valley period, where they are located? They are located in Mohenjo Daro. Where is Mohenjo Daro located? In Pakistan. Okay, Pakistan. Next, also at few of the other sites, uh, we have got what metal castings of buffalo, of goat, of goat as well. Next, uh, metal casting of copper, dog and uh, bird, so we have got at Lothal. So, as I mentioned, whenever we come across an Indus Valley site, we have to add the extra information, we need to know about the extra information, that is state. So, Lothal is present in the state of Gujarat. In Kalibangan, we have got uh, Bronze Bull. So, where is Kalibangan present? In Rajasthan. So, in Daimabad also, Daimabad is also one of the Indus Valley site. Okay, Indus Valley site. There also we have got uh, what? Uh, some metal castings of Indus Valley period. Indus Valley period. Next, Terracotta. So, what is Terracotta? If you look at the image, you will get to know. So, a type of uh, what? It has been prepared from soil. Terracotta. So, from this example, we also get to know that Indus Valley used to, people used to worship mother goddess. Okay. Mother goddess. Next, seals. So, in modern day, we have seals and generally these seals are used uh, for trading purposes and all in order to establish authenticity. Probably, during Indus Valley period also, in order to establish authenticity, when we are uh, what? Uh, making business with the others, they used to have seals. Okay, they used to have seals, and here are few examples. So seals in Mohenjo-daro, unicorn seals and Pashupati seals. So, okay, these are unicorn seals and these are Pashupati seals. So if we need not know in detail about the various things which are present in these seals. At the superficial level, we need to understand that Pashupati seals and unicorn seals. These are the seals pre uh, pertaining to Indus Valley period. Okay, Indus Valley period, and these seals can be found in Mohenjo-daro. Next question can be framed in this fashion, which are the various uh, what uh, things used to make seals. So seals were made up of steatite, agate, chert, copper, faience, terracotta. So it would be difficult to sometimes what remember all of them, but at least if we focus on the important elements like copper and faience, okay. So they were used in making seals, they were used in making seals. Next another important point which can be beneficial from main's point of view. So here standard Harappan seal 2 cross 2 square inches usually of soft river stone or steatite. So here 2 cross 2 standard size indicates even in the at the time of Indus Valley civilization there was standardization. Okay, there was standardization. Now today we have standardization with respect to measures. So if we say 1 kg here the same 1 kg will be true at some other place as well because of the standardization. So these seals size of 2 cross 2 square inch also indicates that there are some kind of standardization which prevailed during Indus Valley civilization as well. Next important places. 
So again, in detail, we'll be uh, discussing about the places. But here, Harappa in north. So when we start moving from north to south, so the first we'll encounter Harappa. Next we'll encounter Mohenjo-daro in the south. Next, Rupar is present in the state of Punjab. Balathal is present in the state of Rajasthan. Next, civic planning. So when it comes to what? Houses, markets, storage facilities, offices, public baths, drainage system. So all these are present in modern day. But through Indus Valley civilization, we get to know that such kind of what uh, planning was uh, also existed during Indus Valley period as well. Okay. So, so we have got uh, such kind of proofs. Next, stone structural remains. So stone structural remains of the Indus Valley period indicates that they also used to use the stone for the construction. So example, one such example is in Dola Vira. So even this is important. So questions can be framed in this fashion. So Indus Valley civilization people, they did not have any kind of stone structures. Okay, it's false. They also had stone structures as well. Okay, stone structures as well. Important. Next, pottery. So there are different kinds of pottery which Indus Valley civilization uh, pot, uh, pots they made. So using fine wheel. So there were plain pottery without any kind of painting or images. Next, painted pottery was there. Polychrome, multiple colors. Next, perforated pottery, an example of perforated pottery is here. Next, painted earthen jar in Mohenjo-daro. So, these examples indicate that there are different kinds of pottery, uh, which were pots which were prepared during Indus Valley civilization. Next, beads and ornaments. So, whether Indus Valley civilization of, uh, were aware, of, uh, did they wear ornaments? Yes, they wear uh, ornaments. So, ornaments were made up of what? Gemstones bone and baked clay. So interesting to note that they even made ornaments out of bone. Next, hoards of jewelry found at Mohenjo-daro and Lothal. So archaeologists have found what at Mohenjo-daro and Lothal which are Indus Valley sites that uh, hoards of jewelry. Okay, So a lot of jewelry has been found by archaeological department indicating that Indus Valley civilization people they used to wear jewelry. Next, similarly a cemetery found at Farmana in Haryana. Farmana at Haryana. So they dead bodies were buried with ornaments so it indicates that it indicates about the belief of Indus Valley civilization probably they believed that after death also there is a life so in that life people will wear those ornaments that's why when they were being buried so the ornaments used by them were also be or were also buried okay so this is an example which indicates about the culture or the belief of the Indus Valley civilization people next few of the factories have been discovered at Chen Hudro then Hudro is a place in Pakistan, Lothal is a place in Gujarat. So here, uh, uh, archaeologists have discovered factories, uh, factories which were used to manufacture these jewelries. Okay, jewelries. Next, beads were made up of various materials. It may be cornelian, amethyst, jasper, crystal, quartz, theatite, turquoise, lapis lazuli, copper, gold, bronze, faience, terracotta. So among these the important materials which are used to prepare as we know one is gold, bronze, faience, copper, one more important is lapis lazuli. So this appears in multiple contexts. So that's why it becomes important for us to understand that whether Indus, uh, Indus Valley civilization people were aware of lapis lazuli or not. Yes, they were aware of lapis lazuli and using that they used to prepare beads. Next textiles. So Indus Valley civilization people were aware of cotton. They were also aware of wool and uh, the proofs indicate that both rich as well as poor, they were involved in what? So these are the examples of what? Uh, bead work and jewelry items of Indus Valley period. Indus Valley period. Next, so these are the holes. Okay. So used for spinning. Okay, used for spinning. So these were made up of different quality. So rich used Payance and poor used what shell. So it, as different uh, materials were used for uh, what spinning, it indicated that both rich as well as poor they were they involved in the practice of spinning. Okay, spinning. So what kind of questions can be framed here in Plim's point of view? So Indus Valley civilization people were unaware of cotton. If they pose such kind of question, then that will be false. They were aware of cotton. They were aware of cotton. Next, men and women wore separate pieces of attire. So when it comes to wearing of clothes, so they wore separate, uh, two separate pieces of cloth. So just like our pant and shirt. Okay. So similar to dhoti and shawl. So 
one at the top and one in the bottom. So this was about the attire. So whether in Valley people were aware of the fashion, yes, they were also aware of the fashion as well. So there are clues of different hairstyles uh, and people is sporting beard. So all this indicates that they were aware of, they were conscious of fashion. And also they used cosmetic and face paint, uh, lipstick and uh, eyeliner. So for all this, the material which was used was cinnabar. Cinnabar, important. So the, all these proofs indicate that they were also aware of fashion as well. Fashion as well. So this was about the fashion. Similarly, the next important part is Indus Valley sites. So the information that is given in the book, it would not be sufficient. From UPSC perspective, if you look at the previous year papers, so there is a clear indicator that whenever an ancient site appears, then we need to know about its what modern state where it is present. Also questions might be framed like this, uh, which of the following are Indus Valley sites. So here we need to know about these this list and the, these are the places uh, which are recognized as Indus Valley sites. And the next is we need to know about where they are present, okay, where they are present. So here Daimabad is present in Maharashtra, Bhagat Rao is present in Gujarat, Rojri is present in Gujarat, Rangpur is present in Gujarat, Lothal, Gujarat, Surkotada, Gujarat, Amri, Pakistan, Chanhudro, Pakistan, Code DJ, Pakistan, next Mohenjadaro, Pakistan, Soktako, Pakistan, Kagendor, Pakistan, Kalibangan, Rajasthan, Siswal, Haryana, Balu, Haryana, Alamgirpur, Uttar Pradesh, Banwali, Haryana, Kulas, Uttar Pradesh, Bhagwanpura, Haryana, Dhaderi, Punjab, Rupar, Punjab, Nagar, Sagoj, Punjab, Katpalon, Punjab, Manda, Jammu, Harappa, Pakistan, Rehman, Deri, Pakistan, Gumla, Pakistan. So this list of sites as well as the corresponding modern states are also equally important from exam point of view. So this was about the arts of the Indus Valley. Uh, similarly, in the subsequent classes, we will be discussing the important topics related to UPSC. For all our subsequent updates, subscribe to our channel and hit on the bell icon. Thank you.